Group Interview. 그래도 운 좋게 20강을 뚫은 거는 만족스럽지만 또 그렇다고 10강에서 만족하기에는 좀더 아쉬운, 뭐 적당했다 그 정도로 평가하고 싶네요. 일단 20강 탈락 안한 거에 있어서는 만족을 하고요. 10강에서는 좀 경기력이 너무 안 좋아서 그거에 대해서 좀 많이 속상해요. 10강에서 이제 1주차 끝나고 발렌시아를 갔다 왔는데 흐름이 뭔가 깨진 듯한 느낌이 너무 많이 들어가지고 근데 다졌는데도 6강을 가더라고요. 그게 스스로 너무 마음에 안 들어가지고 사실 뭐 6강 진출이지만 만족하진 않아요. 네, 일단은 제 게임 원생에서 망했다고 생각하는 시즌이 몇개 있는데 그 중에 하나가 아닌가 생각이 듭니다. 진짜 떨어질 수는 있지만 경기력도 워낙 마음에 들지 않았고 진혁 선수한테 지는 건좀 아니지 않나 생각하고 있습니다. 아직도 분합니다. 복귀 하면은 잠할 거라고 생각을 했는데 스스로 이제 메타를 바꾸면서 이제 주도를 하더라고요. 성주를 그렇게 압도적으로 이길지 몰랐어가지고 더 대단한 것 같아요. 김필자가 돌아와서 성적 내기 힘들 거라고 생각을 했는데 준호 보면서 좀제 생각을 다르게 하게 됐고 어, 어떻게 보면 좀 존경스러웠어요. 준호 형이 원래 굉장히 잘했는데 우승하는 거 보고 저도 빨리 하고 싶다 이런 생각이 어요 당사자가 바로 옆에 있어가지고 말해도 될지 모르겠지만 아, 연습하는 환, 과정을 다 봤는데 했다고 할거 연습을 뭐하러 했나 아 연습을 너무 고생스럽게 열심히 했는데 어, 준비한 걸 못해가지고 성호나 병렬이는 무게감 있는 선수들이라 어, 저 이기기 힘들다고 생각을 했었는데 지금 멤버는 확실히 이전보다는 좀더 쉬운 것 같아요 판도의 변화가 있을 만한 선수들이긴 한데 한 선수가 조금 아쉬운 선수가 한명 들어와가지고 누구죠? 어, 조중혁 선수가 그래도 워낙 재능으로 먹고 사는 선수이기 때문에 또 붙으면 또 어떻게 될지 모르니까 아니, 그래도 잘하는 선수들이 올라온 것 같아요 강명우랑 싸우는 게 낫지 않을까 한방 맞으면 3초 만에 끝나니까 금방 끝나는데 민수랑 토크는 사실 밤새 토크인데 거기서 매듭 못 지으면 아침 먹으면서도 얘기해야 되고 얘기를 계속 하는 거 하다 죽는 것보다 맞아 죽는 게 낫다 저는 그래도 어, 후가 나을 것 같아요 저는 싸움을 싫어하기 때문에 어, 네, 저도 그만큼은 못하겠지만 그래도 어느 정도는 저도 말 많이 할수 있거든요. 근데 뭐 명우 형이랑 싸우면 당연히 안될것 같고 사실 그렇게 뭐 말빨이 세다거나 아니면 뭐 까다롭다고 생각하진 않아가지고 민수랑 얘기하면 뭐 제가 이기지 않을까 싶네요. 뭐 굳이 하나 뽑으라면 민수랑 얘기하는 게 낫지 않을까. 살아, 살아야죠, 그래도. 아, 옛날에 그리고 피원이었어가지고 만약에 갈궜으면 아, 나한테 원한이 있지 않을까 그런 걱정도 되고 제 기억엔 2012년 GSTF 시절에 2킬인가 3킬 하고 가방 들고 찍은 사진인 것 같습니다 오, 둘이 정확히 기억해 10년 전인데? 사실 그때만 잘했어서 그때는 다 기억을 해요 굉장히 저도 깜짝 놀래 누워서 다리를 올려보라고 했는데 다리가 안 올라갔어요 선생님이 뚝딱뚝딱뚝딱 한 3분 하셨는데 다리가 갑자기 90도로 싹 올라오더라고요 그래서 저기서 신앙심이 다들 생겨가지고 지켜보시는 분들이 다 박수를 칠 정도로 건강해졌습니다. 저 사진 이후. 저때 이제 IM 이때인데 LG IM 이때인데 아마 제가 이후로는 저때 처음 코드에스 올라갔을 때였나 그랬을 거예요 아마. 그때 광탈했죠. 아. 사진 요즘도 가끔 보거나 혹시 불러본 적 있다. 아 많죠. 얼마 없는 저런 사진 중 하나여가지고. 아 이거요. 진짜 그 약간 못됐다. 찍은 사람 진짜 못된, 못된 사람이다. 벌 받을 거다. 시즌 2때 어떻게 보면 은 저는 제가 실패를 했다고 생각을 하는데 그래서 그 실패 때문에 시즌 3에는 좀더 잘할 수 있을 것 같아요. 네, 뭐 성적에 대한 각오는 사실 없고요. 그냥 건강하게 시즌 잘 마무리했으면 좋겠어요. 시즌 3 목표는 저는 그냥 10강에 가는 게 목표고요. 그리고 다른 번외적으로는 좀 강철 멘탈로 어, 하고 싶어요. 시즌 2 때는 오랜만에 경기라서 긴장도 많이 되고 또 준비도 좀 부족했던 것 같은데 한번 그래도 겪고 나니까 다시 감이 돌아오는 것 같아서 좀더 잘할 수 있을 것 같은 그런 기대감이 들거든요. 잘 해보도록 하겠습니다. Today's matchup. Creator. Ragnarok. 
Round of 20, Group D. Two thousand twenty-two Hot Six GSL Season Three. Welcome back, everybody, to Group D GSL Code S. We're about to go into our winners' match: Ragnarok versus Creator. Creator got here with a two-one victory over Sue, and Ragnarok with a fast two-zero over Ryung, and kind of a convincing, although awkward, <laughs> CVT fashion as those games were a little bit funky. Now we got a PV PVZ ahead of you for you guys. Creator looking good in that first match. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, I think Creator probably going to 2-0 Ragnarok. Maybe Ragnarok takes a game and we get a 2-1 with Creator still winning. But, you know, honestly, Creator looked pretty terrifying. He did have that, he did have that one weird game against Sue. Yeah. <laughs> Where, like, I don't know army. what to make of that game, to be honest. I don't know if anybody uh, can make. It's like he got maxed out and he's like, Stalker's here, Stalker's there. Now all my stuff's gone. And yeah. he just lost the game. Um, happens sometimes, especially when you're trying to play that style like Creator did, where you have stalkers everywhere on the map, and then yeah. your armies back at home are really high tech, but they don't have like any meat to them. And yeah, sometimes things just fall apart. We've seen it happen with a lot of different Protoss players in a lot of different matches, but we're going to Stargazers. That's you guys it's at you home, guys. all the Stargazers <laughs> in the chat. Game one, let's go. I love these map names, man. They're so man. good. Team NV, creator. Alpha X, Ragnarok. I'm curious what builds creator has prepared because coming into today, he had the potential to play nine PVZs with two Zergs in this group. So you'd have to think that he's got a couple tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I think he for sure has to have a, a big range of builds. And I think that's one of the things with Creator. You know, in the past, he always, he fumbled his builds a lot, to be honest. Mm -hmm. like historically, it, you mean? Historically, yeah. Um, and it was tough to cast, man. I mean, I've been following this guy's career for over a decade here. There's a walkout. No. We're not doing this. <laughs> we will not be on camera. Um, so uh, it was exciting for me, you know, this year. We, when I start, started to see Creator have all of his builds work, all the ideas were there. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears> and, you know, the execution was really on top. So, yeah, I mean, I think he's a real threat to any Zerg here. I, I also think, I mean, look, GSL, let's just take the last five years. Let's take Legacy of the Void, okay? Mostly Zergs won. Yeah. So if you're going to get uh, become a GSL champion, I don't care what race you are, including Zerg, you need to be good versus Zerg. <laughs> That's right? very true. And I think, uh, you know, a, a player like Creator who's had to go through this gauntlet, this experiment where we just keep learning more about the game and building on top of that. Um, you know, I do think uh, him and Hero as well, both of these Protosses, that because they've stuck with it, they've really got a very modern, healthy take on the matchup in general. Especially with um, as little, as few patches as we've had over four or five years. Yeah. Kind of uh, leads to a situation where your builds aren't really becoming obsolete because of balance reasons. Maybe they fall out of the meta. And right. as that continues over years and years and years, these top Protoss players are kind of able to put all these, albeit aged builds, in their pocket to kind of whip out sometimes. And sometimes taking something off meta and bringing it into the current meta space can be really productive. Oh yeah, these ideas that have been really fleshed out but are just sort of, uh, you know, it's not what everybody's doing right now. It doesn't mean that they, they can't be used anymore. I mean, one thing about RTS is you have to recycle a certain number of builds, but yeah, I think uh, you're 100% spot on state. Sometimes you bring these older builds out, people aren't ready for it. Or you just put that in, in your toolkit of, of openings uh, to make your play really have a lot of range. And yeah, Warp Prism Adept, for example. <laughs> this yeah. one goes back a long ways. 
See if he goes up to four gateways with this. Now, um, this could look like what he did in game one versus Sue, right? But I, I, we don't see the Dark Shrine or anything here yet. There's no third and fourth cast, so this is looking like a different variant right now. So this is probably to pair with game one. This is basically him playing the group. It is. This, this build is and now out in the bloodstream. He's cutting uh, at 37 workers as well, so this yeah. is way more committed. He's actually adding a fifth gateway right now, yeah. so he's and really sixth. sixth. Yeah, this is effectively an all-in. He needs huge yeah. damage to and make so this, this work. So this one, he's like, oh, you think I'm going to get DTs and then, you know, sledgehammer him with uh, adepts. Mm -hmm. Now, this doesn't, uh, you don't comfortably transition out of this very easily, so. No, often, often the only transition that you can make out of this one if you're, if the game is still playable, if it doesn't completely get fumbled in terms of attack, is disruptors because, as you see right now, Ragnarok he's already got roaches in production, and roaches are fantastic against Glaive Adepts. Protoss on limited gas with a lot of gateways on two bases, they really don't have a lot of tools to deal with this. So Creator needs to get a lot done here. He's got 16 lings and about I, well, I didn't see how many roaches, but a couple roaches were going to hatch here. Um, let's see where he wants to try to maneuver these. Eight adepts out now for Creator is... Now, he's getting ready to warp in a lot more. Yeah, yeah. six more. Now, now, when you see them warping in in these waves like this, that's when you know it's actually an adept commitment. When you mm -hmm. see it just in fours, so eight total, looks like two waves uh, of uh, four gateways warping it in, you think this could still maybe be the DT or some other kind of weird tech. And you can tell that he's trying to hide his adept count right now because yeah. of that. He only shades in with two. He keeps everyone behind the overlords. Just trying to build up his adept count. And surprisingly, he's warping at everything in everything right here on this uh, bridge. I was thinking he might do some in you know, the pocket natural there to try and catch Ragnarok off guard. But instead, he's fully committed here in the front. And that is so many adepts. He's going to okay. one-shot a queen. That's Damn. so many adepts, man. Yeah, and he could actually continue to one-shot these Ragnarok. queens. Ragnarok! I think he was either move commanding or trying to get the yeah, war prison. So something weird happened there because he got way too spread out. More adepts are going to come in. And the mm. Link Surround is pretty damn good. Link Surround plus one. Bile gets huge damage on these adepts. But they are going to shade into oh. the main now. And that's a lot more drones going down. Ragnarok now on 28 workers. He was only on 39 when this attack commenced. So every worker loss here is huge. Is now Creator shading out of the natural ramp, trying to get away. And this is some pretty good damage. 25 drones now for Ragnarok against the 41 of Creator. Although Ragnarok has the better army, Creator with that damage to his economy has the ball rolling. Yeah, he, he did an excellent job there. Uh, I mean, this is 40, uh, sorry, 31, uh, what, drones remaining now here. Army supply massive for uh, Creator. And Crater is going to be following this up with a third base, Immortals, and Blink. So no disruptors from him, instead focusing on the Immortals. And Ragnarok in a little bit of an awkward spot right now because he really needs to drone heavily, but the threat of these Adepts is still looming. Yeah, and it's not clear if this is going to be a commitment or not. I mean, with mm. these Warp Prism out here, you could be hiding this and warping in waves of Adepts. Now, he's not doing that, and I think Creator is uh, playing an excellent game. Uh, you know, on his part because of that. Notice the only place that the Zerg could probably comfortably expand would be this fourth base. It's sort of an island. Um, mm. But, you know, the War Prism generates enough of a threat of that. It's kind of an uncomfortable place to go. Um, but I think it's just so smart taking the third base, getting that blink, getting this Robotech up here. The follow-up push is going to be very tough to deal with. Even just sending these two Adepts over here just to try to one-shot some workers. Yeah, a couple of drone kills here is meaningful. Look, at he, it opens up a space to get more damage done in the main as well. Four drones going down, almost getting a fifth. Second, I thought he might start dropping the depths to try and finish that one off. And to this point, Ragnarok only just now equalizing on worker counts. And in that time, Creator has been able to build a much more developed army here, mixing in Immortals, adding Blink Stalkers. He's still only on three gases as well, so this is a very mineral-heavy army here for Creator, and that's going to mean that it has a lot of punch. Yeah, it's going to be uh, pretty scary for the Zerg here. And I don't know that Ragnarok can survive this, but I also don't feel like he can beat this and then be comfortable either. Does that make sense? It's like, tough. Like, th th this is a lot of pressure building here. And with Blink done, that's when you can really get value. Mm, especially if you're just posturing over here near the creep. 
Because Ragnarok with his army, he can't really engage this off of Creep. Crater has to come to him, and Crater feeling confident, gonna push up this ramp. You gotta be careful with that uh, oh, immortal force field. one goes down. Showing some confidence too with the blink up. Ragnarok just not enough army right now. Crater. Yeah, Crater over. murdering here. Blinks in again. That's going to be game one. Ragnarok has been defeated here. Creator going to have a 1-0 lead. GG. All right. Man, really riding the momen momentum from that uh, adept timing. That was it a was, lot it of was a good build. It was a good build, and I, and I like that he knew exactly how many adepts to get, where to go, and when to stop. Mm. We've had so many games in the history of StarCraft II where adept pressure builds are all-ins. They just never stop. I guess an all-in, you don't stop, but you get what I'm saying. Mm. You know, they would just keep making adepts and hoping, okay, maybe this will get him. But he got him, him exactly uncomfortable, kept the pressure to keep Zerg off the fourth, kept it ambiguous, didn't show the warp prism either, so that way you don't know if there's more stuff warping in or not. Mm -hmm. But the blink into a mortal with a third boot base made it a really powerful closer. Especially on three gases like that, because you yeah. just see how much, how many minerals he had. That stalker so many huge. stalkers, yeah, yeah, it's great. And stalkers can always out micro roaches, lings, and, and uh, rav uh, ravagers here. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go to waterfall here for map two. Creator with a one to zero lead. Um, Actually, I think we might be coming back on camera here. There might be a delay. We will see. We'll see. Book player is getting in the lobby now. Perhaps we're all right. Okay, no. I, I think we are going to go into game. <laughs> oh, a little Ooh. bit of chocolate. Take note of that. He's a dark chocolate <laughs> Protoss gamer. Protoss players at home. Protoss players. Go load up all things Protoss. Get That's the brand right. of that chocolate. Get you, it imported. Do you do any dark chocolate <laughs> when you play? Dark chocolate? No, I don't. Is this a thing? Eating dark chocolate while you play? You didn't know that about this? No. I'm not. I'm not trolling you right now. You're not. Yeah. It's like, uh, well, hold on. Let's keep the suspense. I'll tell State in game two. Let's go. Next time on Dragon yeah, Ball Z. To be continued. <laughs> Will this make you better at StarCraft 2? Or is Taste of Savora? <laughs> Creator. So some people uh, will take caffeine to play. I'm a caffeine, I'm a caffeine guy caffeine personally. Guy. Uh, either ice Alpha americano X. or Blind green tea. Um, but some people will actually nibble on small bits of dark chocolate because that doesn't give you the same kind of sugar crash. Huh? But but what what does it give you? <laughs> It like, it, like st it stimulates your brain. Really? Yeah, it like perks you up a little bit. Is that because of the sugar in it, or is it is it just the chocolate? I I don't know anything no. about this. Well, I'm not a scientist. <laughs> I, I never. You said, don't know. I'm like, listen, State. I never eat. said that <laughs> dark chocolate was a computer game. Okay, I just said that gamers use it. Gamers there's, use dark chocolate. So I'm sure you could Google it, there, but there's uh, something. That, this has been uh, used in chess. I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, probably some other. Super cool, smart. Interesting. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> super cool, smart super, stuff. Super cool, smart stuff. That's the category That's I put it in. Yeah. Huh. But uh, I'm gonna look this up when I get T home. Ty was uh, eating little bites of dark chocolate. Is that the secret? What is? Happy Ragnarok Day. Is it Ragnarok's birthday? I suppose it is. Is it, is it the third? Um, it's the first. It's the first. Happy early birthday, I guess. Ragnarok, Ragnarok's Creator's birthday? gonna be giving him. Creator's gonna be giving him a big L for his birthday. It looks like he's playing really hot. You just knew his birthday? Well, no, that was on. Wasn't that Happy Ragnarok Day? It was like on the on the. Oh, it's, well, I saw Happy Ragnarok Day. I'm assuming on it? it's his birthday. Huh. Maybe he had some big victory. I you were like, like one of these people. Of. Like, you like know all the pro gamers' birthdays. I know like, Sue's huh. birthday because me and Sue actually were born on the same day in the same year. Really? <laughs> yeah. Damn. Opposite sides of the world, man. Opposite sides. Two gamer babies were born. One Protoss, one Zerg, That's one right. good at StarCraft, one bad. <laughs> <laughs> one good at casting. Like, uh, <laughs> Neither of us are good at casting. <laughs> Tasteless. Let's be real. Now, um, all right. it's going to be uh, Twilight Council here right away. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to get a robo behind this. I do wonder that. I also loved uh, this little trick that we, we didn't talk about it because we were talking about dark chocolate, yeah, which was far more important. Yeah. But Creator was um, he had his probe down in the the natural expansion of Ragnarok and just like kept dancing around the mineral line. Yeah. And Ragnarok like pulled a drone, like you're not doing anything tricky, right? Maybe getting flashbacks to like losses against parting or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no Robo yet, and a Stalker in production, huh? Yeah, the Stalker maybe to just try to kill off the Overlord to get the tech later on. Mm. 
gonna be blink quite early here for okay. creator yeah that's very fast look at that hmm what do you have planned here creator it's the second gateway how soon can you get blink i guess we're gonna find out robo going down as well huh. so i think he might go four gate with blink stalker I'm just trying to pressure yeah, Perhaps. well, keep in mind the way that the the opening is packaged to the player who's being attacked. Mm -hmm. You can't tell that it's once again a different build initially until you see the stalkers. Ragnarok behind this, by the way, has been making a ton of links. Yeah, he's not quite all in, but only 27 drones right now. Seven more in production. This is this is the way of the Ragnarok. This is the way of the rags. Dude. Oh, actually, mm, battery going down there. This a little is, concerning. He like makes a bunch of stuff, tries to really throw you off and makes drones behind him. Yeah, never mind. I thought for a second the Lings might be able to get enough surface area to have two of them attack that. Look battery, at how bad one stalker is against this. This is yeah, like the funniest is, thing I've ever seen. It's like four hits or something. It takes, yeah. it takes a few. He might not get these gateways, man. That battery, I think, is going to finish. Uh, one gateway is going to go down, but that's... Mm, I'm, I'm not sure if that's uh, what you want. Okay, this is what you want. <laughs> or is it? For yeah. a second, I thought he was going to run into the man and get a scout. Seems off. Like, Sorry, nobody's there you sure. go. Like, Ragnarok's like, is this what I want? <laughs> is this what will this make me happy? No. Well, he does get into the main base. And behind this, he has taken a worker lead. And he's actually making more roaches. And he's going for a roach warrant and adding a lot more lings. So. Well, I mean, the oh, Creator's secrets. going up to a lot of gateways. Okay, yeah, I actually yeah, yeah. did not catch that behind all of this. Creator's going up to, it's got to be maybe five, six gateways. Five or six gates, I think. And um, he's going to have the Warp Prism ready. I mean, some probes were killed, some infrastructure was destroyed, but he could basically move out with this. Hmm, this slowed Creator down quite a bit, though, and Ragnarok on about 44 workers. We'll see what he's able to get done. Shield battery now. Yeah, he's just going to boost that. Overcharge the battery and get a full HP on the uh, gateway. Doesn't want these links to be too annoying. And Ragnarok is going to just power up on roaches and links from here on out. And I I'm not sure if Creator is going to have enough to really push through this because Ragnarok, that Ling attack, although it didn't get too much real damage done, gave him the scouting intel that he needed and also bought a little bit of time. So I'm curious what Crater is really is going to be able to get done with these Stalkers or if he's going to try and take a third base behind this because... I think he wants to put on serious hmm. pressure here. I actually think that, weirdly enough, the, the big Ling investment, I think it actually put Ragnarok in an almost worse spot. You think so? I might be wrong, but I do feel like it. Yeah. Because you know, it, it, he, he, he made a, a big plume of drones behind it. Um, but, you know, you could micro against this pretty well. All oh, those links wish they were back at home right now. Yeah. Still a lot of links and roaches here Dude, in the third. Big snipes on those two Ravagers. Mm. This is scary though for Creator. Army supply way in favor of Ragnarok, and a lot of that is in links. 64 links out for Ragnarok right now. And there's one thing Link Stalkers are not good at it is killing links. Is yeah. Link's gonna full surround, Biles come wow. down, and that's Creator just getting completely wiped here. Is Ragnarok had all the pieces of the puzzle to shut this down and Looks like we're going to be going into game number three, eventually, Tasteless. <laughs> yeah, no, I think there's no recovery here. I way underestimated uh, the position here. Yeah, 43 Four drones is pretty much all you need, and <laughs> Ragnarok with a ton of links. Can he actually save it this time, I wonder, with the Ravagers and the Biles? I think he can break it if he wants to, but he might just play kind of the safe game right now because he is on three bases. His economy is effectively uninterrupted. He's able to drone as much as he wants. like. What is Creator going to make right now? Like, more Stalkers? Is he going to make, like, one Colossus? Like, there's really nothing Creator can do that's scary. And, oh, my God. Oh, that what? was almost, almost got it. <laughs> it was just below. That would have been a really bad way to lose that. We basically never have that happen. Yeah, I mean, the Stalkers could be annoying, but, you know, the Zerg... Oh. Since Protoss doesn't have, like, a fourth base, or, I'm sorry, a third base here, it's kind of hard to... Mm -hmm make anything happen. And Creator's going to play this out. You, you can't fault him. If he wins this, no, he goes not? on to the round of 10. Yeah. So, of course, they're going to stay in this game. But, and, you know, Ragnarok hasn't taken a fourth yet. He's just going to do another follow-up push. He is. Looks like he might have one Colossus or one Disruptor with this. And he's actually going to take a third base. 
Hmm. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to defend this one. Well, we'll actually, see. Yeah, let's see. But, you know, I mean, if Ragnarok attacks in and bungles that, I think Creator's got a real shot still. Yeah, it is a path to victory. You're right about that. Yeah. Colossus is going to be the choice here for Creator. Uh, and he's going to come in here once more. It's just so much Zerg, Zerg though. Yeah, not bad force fields. Pretty good pairings here for these Zealots. Uh, kind of a funny little engagement there. The Lings are going to force a cancel. Ragnarok's taking a fourth base, and he's just going to continue to power up and build more units. And I'm not sure what Creator is going to do from here. Well, he wants to try to get the Colossus out and have enough of that splash damage that he can maybe take on hordes of Zerglings. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. He's going to get a Disruptor as well. He, okay, so it seems like, like he's going to lean back in and just like, all right, two base all in. I think this is a smart play. It's pretty much his only option. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work, but I, I, I like the idea behind it. I'm right there with you. So Colossus will, you know, in theory, do a decent enough job of cleaning out the lings, and then you have maybe, man, the more I'm saying this, the more it just sounds like it's not going to work. <laughs> it's not a very <laughs> you to explain that, like, <laughs> Just saying it out loud, and you're like, no, this is wrong. Yeah. We'll see, though. If the Disruptor gets a big hit off, Wonder Avenger is not bad. something. If he can intercept this. Yeah, I was oh. about to say, there is potential. He's able to intercept that army, and Ragnarok right now trying to push over. And okay, you know the, what? This is actually this is getting a little scary here, man. I'm I'm not sure why Ragnarok is kind of sequestering off his army into these little forces because I feel like if he just goes for one big fight, he can just win this right away. Yeah, I mean, I think the the important thing to note is like you don't actually have to like always counterattack. Like he's on two bases. Mm -hmm. He's going to mine. He's going to run out of minerals soon. Yeah, he's already at half minerals yeah. in the main, and you see one mineral he, patch is already yeah. mined out of the natural. Either surround his army, uh, or if he takes a third, then you deal with that. But it's one of the two. There's no need to like run back into his natural. Like he's, uh, you know, uh, right now creators all in. I don't think this can work out. I mean, the math is there's no ravagers out for Ragnarok yeah. just a second. He's and actually making he, game lanes. You know, so. there are a lot of sentries here, so he oh. could. He could um, this this actually he could barricade might this. work. We'll, well see. Creator's coming in now. Just stalkers. Ooh. Like that cancel on the disruptor. Saves that shot, I think. <laughs> These stalkers to, can't go anywhere. Uh, okay, actually pretty good pull away. Yeah, but no force fields, not enough energy, I guess. And well, it's not on. a bad trade, but the army supply still favoring Ragnarok just a little bit here. 132 to 96. Keep in mind. Well, you know, I'm kind of surprised he's coming up at this part. Okay, Ravagers. Yeah, you need Ravagers for this. <laughs> I don't mind him going up here because it's just two force fields to block either of these ramps, and Ragnarok knows it, so he's not trying to go up onto the natural of the third because he doesn't want to get blocked off of one of these bases and have, like, Crater just walk into the natural, then walk into the main and kill the tech, right? Right. Oh, here we'll we see. go, another shot. Oh, That's juicy. a pretty big one. Banelings and Ravager going down. Still some force fields left in the back here for Creator as Ragnarok's trying to get us around. Banelings are going to be able to connect, though. Coming oh, in. Oh, my God. Blink up, on the, up on the high ground. He takes the Colossus with him. Uh, this should be over soon. Should be, but man, props to Creator for making a game of it. <laughs> yeah, it was a hell of a game, man. For a second, I really thought he might have a chance there. Just his army was, he built it up enough that he kind of put himself in a position where he might have been able to come back with that game, and Ragnarok is going to take it, but good showing from Creator after really a bungled Link Stalker timing. Dude, it's there's something funny about this, because, like, every hmm. game Ragnarok, like, takes three bases, and then he, like, flips a coin, and he's like, is it Roaches <laughs> or is it Lings? And he sends that across and does damage and then makes a bunch of drones. Hmm. It's just so funny to see it happen a couple times in a row now. Um, well, frustrating loss there. There it is, the Dark Chocolate. Yeah, the Dark Chocolate. You might be onto something, man. Choco Gamers is what I call them. Cho Choco, Choco, Choco Gamers. Choco Gamers. Yeah, man. Get your Dark Chocolate. Uh, inside and out, in and out. In and out burger inside going to map out. number three. Surprising, See, actually. Crater, it's going to be inside the game and out to the round of 10. <laughs> Stretch. Yeah. <laughs> like it, though. Getting bold with these. Yeah. It's always funny seeing the the map the map name meta evolve over like a GSL as casting. Oh yeah, it. oh yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, set number three, inside and out. One of these guys is gonna go to the round of ten. 
Will it be Creator or will it be Ragnarok? And more importantly, will Ragnarok make nine roaches or, or 14 links? <laughs> and then only drones behind it. Team Envy, Creator. Alpha X, Ragnarok. You know, going back to the uh, early game of map number two, that Blink Stock yeah. opening is not something that I see in a lot of PvZ games that I watch. And me too. To me, that kind of speaks to the depths of Crater's preparation coming into this group. So even though the build really didn't pay off in the end, Ragnarok went for that link timing and broke through the wall. He got a full scout off on what composition Crater was building. He saw the gateways and he just knew to make units and shut it down. I like the creators kind of going out of the box with these pressure builds to try and keep these Zerg players on the toes. So even though, you know, in map number two, it, it didn't work in his favor at all, really. He was playing from behind pretty much from the get-go. I think that kind of preparation speaks to the skill that he's bringing in in this PBZ series. And I'm liking his odds to get out of this group. We're seeing some really nice play out of Creator so far in his first two uh, first two matches against Sue and Ragnarok. Yeah, I mean, he he's showing that he has such a range that really, like, you can't prepare against what he's going to do. And I think that's uh, the difference between him and Hero and then the rest of our Protosses, mm. where they get predictable, you know? Five different builds, I think, so far from Creator. Or at least it might be. Yeah, and who knows? He might lose this and then, you know, play Sue and we can see two or three more different builds. Could be. Uh, definitely going for a lot of rushes, though. Yeah, I've definitely, noticed that as well. They've definitely been different, uh, you know, techs, but I think big picture, they've all kind of followed the same theme here. With the one exception maybe of being that uh, the Stargate play with the Phoenixes. But yeah, besides that, especially the Adept timings, one with DTs and then one going for like 6 gate and a Bleak Stalker Immortal, mostly timings what we're seeing and this game seems like it's going to be about the same going for a robo again and building a stalker again this is looking just like last game huh see if he throws down the twilight as well you know what protoss player is like good with their prep but like even the casters are kind of wondering what they're going to do know, when we can see off. everything because <laughs> no twilight yet makes me think this might be a robo bay going down we're talking about him taking a third base, and then we look up, and his warp prism is warping four DTs <laughs> onto our caster desk. He just attacks the desk and blows desk. it up. Immortal coming out already, huh? Okay. okay. So there, this could be, um, it, again, it, look at it uh, from the exterior. Mm -hmm. It the always kind of looks like, the, but it always looks like the same thing. If you're a Zerg on the outside. Mm -hmm. The Stalker to shoot away the Overlords, the one Adept, the second Gateway at roughly yeah, the same yeah. timing every time. Exactly. He goes, is he doing that same thing again? But he's not. This time it's Immortals. And I think this will probably be a different type of push, but it'll, it'll, it'll probably be another two base. Lots of Gates, uh, Robo, uh, War Prism, and then this time Immortals probably in pairs juggled. And Ragnarok, once again, building a ton of there links to try he and gather the intel. There he goes. It was <laughs> Lings and not Roaches. Thing. This time Creator does have a battery up already, so that's going to be really helpful here in the defense, especially with the sentry out now is... Oh, he's actually going to show the immortal? Oh, I that, suppose, I oh, think... the overlord of the main base spotted it, so... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. cat's out of the bag already. For a second, I was like, huh? Interesting decision to show it, but... Yeah, it's no no secret any longer in Creator, perhaps knowing that, throwing down a Robo and the Twilight Council, and this might be the kind of thing that's like, okay, my plan has been revealed. Let's change things up just a little bit because this is the kind of tech switch where it builds upon the Immortal already as part of the composition, going yeah. for ground weapons and really any of the Twilight Council techs. And also it plays into the fact that Ragnarok as a Zerg right now is probably gonna stop droning maybe in like the mid 40s unless he really has a good read on what's going on. And then yeah. if you push later, then suddenly the Zerg is punished for having played more defensively earlier in the game, so. I, th I think you're right. I think it, that's the idea, is that you don't see anything come out right away, and you go, all right, mm. well, then your third's gonna be a little bit later, and then the push comes. 
Yeah, we see Ragnarok, he's really, like, he's mixing in drones with links. He's not just droning up because he is kind of afraid of the immortal threat that's looming, but Crater going for charge, adding six more gateways and plus one ground weapons, as well as a third gas, so... It's actually going to be Banelings coming out from Ragnarok, and this is really good tech selection from him. Well, um, mm. you know, four gates come in here. The army's going to be massive. Ragnarok, no fourth yet. Uh, no, no clear target. Uh, by the way, bad creep spread. Kind of been the story so far in uh, PVC yeah. today, it feels like. Creep spread has been a little bit lackluster. But and, and with timings like this, I feel like it doesn't really matter quite as much because usually the push is not very protracted. It's very often just kind of over and done with, you know? Like you right. come into the third base or you try to push up like between the third and the natural and it's either the push is going to work right away or it's not. And creep is kind of out of the equation, but it, it's kind of an interesting position here because generally when you get two base all wins like this, you can look at the composition that both players are going for, and you'll be like, oh, well, I, I like this for Creator. Or, oh, I like this for Ragnarok. But the way the Creator kind of delayed his push and mixed in charge zealots with plus one, so it's going to be one less hit but to kill the Lings. Doesn't this just die to Banes? I mean, I guess Three the Mor centuries, though. Don't. No yeah. Ravagers out yet. I mean, it could still go I, I mean, either it, way. It feels like a weird moment, like the Immortals would have to target the Banes. Maybe, but I, I feel like at that point you're just going to try and minimize the damage there of the splash on the the Zealots with force yeah. fields and also splitting. Because with Zealot speed, I mean, your Zealots also do move faster, so you can micro them quite a bit more. I don't know. It, it's really going to come down to the engagement, I think. Five Immortals, though? That's so much. This army is really strong here. No, nope, only two Ravagers out. Bailing's coming in. Oh, there's some good connections, but the force field's right there on the links. Oh my god. There's He's no gonna surround. Lock him in. He doesn't have the force field energy left to lock him in, and the two more vials come down, and that's more links coming in right now. Uh, oh, I don't know, Tasteless. Yeah, uh, so this is just not. Mm, I guess there's a reason why we've never quite casted this game. GG Ragnarok wins. Creator is going to go to the losers match, and man, I didn't see this one coming. Ragnarok gets out first. Yeah, Ragnarok with nice defense there. Interested in hearing what he's going to say in the winner's interview. Ragnarok with some good ZVP and ZVT performance, going to be the first player of this group out to the round of 10. And a lot of that there just came down to the engagement. Hey, Creator, keep it as cool. Mm. It's not over yet. He's going to face off against the... Uh, the winner of our, our TVC that's going to be coming up next. Uh, but, you know, kudos to uh, Ragnarok, man. He is moving on uh, into the round of 10. We're going to have an interview now and see how he's feeling. Uh, and then we're going to take a break and go to our next best of three. Ragnarok from Alpha X uh, defeats Creator in the winner's match to move on the round of 10. So JYP is going to be conducting the interview since Jury's still not here yet. Congratulations. Thank you. So this is your third consecutive uh, GSL season round of 10. How do you feel right now? You know, honestly, when I saw the group at first, you know, I thought this group was really mm. ideal for me. And you know, when I was starting my preparation and in the middle of it, I had a feeling it's going to be a little bit hard for me. So when you saw the group at first, you thought that this was an ideal group for you. Because uh, in this group, there are no uh, TSL participants, there's no GSL champion. That's right, right? I mean, Creator and Su can be very tricky to play against. But, you know, in the qualifiers, I beat Ryong to make it here to round uh, 20. So, you know, playing against Ryong first, it was really comfortable for me. And you said Season 2 was a failure for you. So, do you have a different feeling going into Season 3 right now? Why are you, why are you laughing right now? 
I mean, this is the last season for a year. So I was thinking yesterday, and since it's the last season, if I get um, eliminated today, I was wondering what I can do until the Super Tournament. I'm going to have to take a long break, a long hiatus. So, you know, I had a feeling I had to win today no matter what. So, you know, I'm really happy, I'm really relieved to make it to round of 10. So against Rome, in the first game, the second game, you went for the roaches. So was this something um, made impromptu uh, against Ryong? You know, when Bunny uh, beat Rainer, he used two base strategy. When Armani uh, also used the two base strategy as well. So, you know, Ryong used to really favor this two-base build even before it was popularized. So I had a feeling that I need to counter it. And that's why we put the roaches today. So you had a feeling you will never lose um, in terms of macro. I mean, if I go for roaches, I can definitely uh, block the two-base strategy no matter what. So I was confident that I could win if I pull it off. You know, against the match, uh, against Creator, in the second game, you kind of um, took his timing off with the Zerglings. So why did you go for that play? You know, that play is not really good um, against Stargate builds. You know, when um, Creator went for Waterfall and Inside and Out, I had a feeling he's never going to go for the Stargate in, on, on those maps. So, you know, um, the strategy that I use is very um, strong against Adepts. And if this was a ladder match, and this is a tournament, you know, I had a feeling that he's going to go for that strategy no matter what, so that's why he went for the Zergling um, off-timing build. You know, the Zerglings got fended off by Creator. Then Creator uh, went for the all-in uh, after, the, after the pro. And then suddenly, you started building the Bailing Nest, and then you were able to defend his um, army. And you know, I have a feeling that you must have practiced this beforehand, or uh, met a player with this build in the ladder. So what do you think about that? You know, I saw the Immortals, and if I I can't do anything with the Zerglings um, in the early phase, it's really hard for me. But then I saw the Immortals, and when Creator uh, picks the Immortals, it means that he's gonna go for the Zealots as well. Zealots as well. So, you know, I kept, um, I kept watching Creator's probes with the Zerglings. And then, you know, he wasn't producing um, any more um, probes, so I had a feeling, I had, I was 100% certain that he's going to go for uh, the Zealot and Immortal Strategy. So you went to the round of 10 now, and you know, there are numerous fans here um, rooting for you, so anything you want to say to them? So, you know, last season I did make it to round of 6. The in the full league, I got eliminated. I got eliminated in Valencia as well, DH, uh, Dream Egg Valencia. You know, my performance was not good overall. But, you know, I have a feeling uh, I play better on GSL stage. And now that I advance as the first place, I have a feeling that I can uh, play better in the next round. I, I too agree, Ragnarok. Your performance is looking so great right now. And also, thank you, uh, Bunny, for helping me with practice. <laughs> so, anything you want to say to Bunny? A pop in the shout out, maybe like, I love you message or something. You know, Bunny actually made it to the round of 10 because of me, so, you know, we actually uh, made it even. Hi, Bunny. Well, thank you, Ragnarok. Thank you. All right, thank you, Andy. Uh, guys, we're going to a break. Ryung Versu coming up next.